Here's a nice find on eBay for about eight bucks plus shipping. It's a Centurn GI 945 Thin Client. Cool little computer. What's nice about it, unlike most Thin Clients, is that it, it actually has a Atom N270, which is a low wattage but pretty good, pretty good little processor in it. It's got um, you know 1.6 megahertz 32-bit processor. Pretty nice. Uh, so it, it actually will work as a pretty decent little Linux computer. Actually a pretty good one, especially for a little server or something like that. And it's just teeny tiny. There's a lot of a lot of USB ports on there. Runs on 12 volts, um, three, 3 amps or less, you know. So low wattage, good thing. Good little processor, computer. But the, the problem is um, it didn't come with any... <clears throat> drives. It's got a 42 or a 44 pin um, slot for a DOM module, but you know, I don't, my DOM, the DOM modules I have are only one or two gigabytes, so I want more than that. It does have this SATA connector. Um, there's no obvious power, but then I, I got to fooling around with the, uh, the voltometer, and this is actually, these two pins are 5 volt power, these two pins are negative, so I've got that. Uh, the power that I need. The problem is this. You know, what are we gonna? What do you do with this humongous thing? Because the, you know, the case it won't fit on there. Um, I mean, it's a 2.5. It's not humongous. I could also use a 1.8, but then I'd have to get a bunch of adapters. And they're they're also pretty expensive. Those little 1.8 drives. So here's the hack. I got this. Sand disk. This is a 128 uh, SSD drive. And one thing that when I first got this thing it, is it's super lightweight and it feels kind of cheap. Um, but then I got to thinking, hmm. So I peeled off this sticker, which voids the war warranty. Uh, screws underneath. I took the screws out and I popped the thing apart. And look at this. That's all there is for the whole thing. So I can get an, an SSD uh, power cable. Take that. They usually come with a Molex uh, cable or a Molex connector, but I can take that off and put a, a little connect, a pin, you know, a female pin connector there and plug in the cable there and then this thing will fit right in there even right there so I think what I'll do is take this out set it aside and then I will cut this off right there and I'll cut this case off in the same place and then I'll put the the module back in, put the case in there, and what we'll end up with is an SSD, you know, about this long. That should fit right, right in there. Let's see how? Let me see how short. Yep, should fit right there. All right, let's see what happens. That took about five minutes. All I did was. Get myself a pair of these things, and I, I cut this off first because it had these marks where, I mean, this is where the bracket is, so I just trim that off, then I put them together, drew a line, trim that off, I had to bend these out flat, trimmed it off, and then I bent them back, got everything square, I put it back together. And I took a file, or you could take some sandpaper, and I smoothed it all off, got it the way that I wanted. Then I took it apart again, and I uh, took it downstairs, washed it off, and dried it with a hairdryer. Washed it off to get all the little metal flakes and whatnot off there, because you wouldn't want that to get on your module. And then I dried it with a hairdryer just to make sure that it was nice and dry. Okay, so the module... 
and go back in. And here's the metal. It had this little sheet of rubber, which I think it just prevents the module from actually touching the metal, shorting out. All right, now that's actually really cool. I may use another one for this and use this for my, I've been using this for a backup. Now I can carry it around a lot easier. So all I'm going to do to finish is put this sticker back on there so that I know what it is. I'll wrap it around and I'm going to put some tape on it uh, just to cover up this back part right there. And then we'll have our module that will slip right in there. Look at that. I have plenty of space. Half an SSD. Alright, that's pretty cool. Now, this is the finished product. A half SSD. We could actually make it smaller because the the board actually only goes to here. So if you had to, you could make it smaller, but this fits but barely. But the nice thing is that that's hand size. So if you're using it as a backup, you can uh, record on that, put it in your pocket, keep it in the glove box of your car, some place uh, separate from your computer. Anyway, all right, so I'm about to put this thing in. Now what I had to do is, here's a power plug, and it's a SATA SSD, so we're only using the red and the two blacks. The the yellow is the um, 12 volts. We're only using the five. You know, if you read the specs on here, eh, somewhere, anyway, it'll tell you it's five volts. And that's what they run on. So they're not using the 12. And there's also uh, supposed to be a 3.3 volt over here, but it's not there. So anyway, that's cut off. The two blacks are joined together. The red um, is is by itself. So we I've got this old. Uh, this was a LED plug on an old ATX board. So anyway, the red's positive. The white is the negative, and it plugs into our board right there. And then I've got the. I had to put an angle SSD there, or I mean uh, SATA cable. I had to put the angle head here. I didn't have a short one with the angle head, so I just coiled this up here, and then this is going to sit right about there when it's all together. The only thing that I had to really mod on the on the board is that this pushes up so tight, I bent this pin off of the heat sink there. So just that one little pin, I just took a pair of pliers and gently bent it over and snapped it off. So that's really the only mod on the board. Now I'm going to turn the camera off and put this thing together. So I'm just going to plug this in here, um, plug the two things on here and then jimmy it in place. It, it, it's not, it takes a second so I'll, I'll turn the camera off. Okay, the mod is complete. Now, it is just barely in there. I think what could have been done would have been just to completely take the module out. So it only would have been this big. And then I could have just wrapped the module in tape or something like that and just let it lay in there. But, you know, I like this. Um, I still have room to put the S or uh, a Wi-Fi card in there if I want, and I don't think 
that I've obstructed the airflow very much at all. And you can still see through that. The airflow is pretty good back here. Now, this is where the power comes in. So once I get this thing up and running, then I will want to I'll keep an eye on the on the temperature of, of the SSD and make sure everything's good there. But so far it looks like it's gonna be a pretty neat little install. Let's see if I can get this lid on. Okay, there it is. So now we have the Sinterm GI 945. Um, it's all ready to go. And um, I'm going to install, I think I'll just install Debian Linux and set it up as a little file server, backup server, or something like that, just to, to demo it. So uh, that's the next step. Alright, I've finally gotten this little thing. I got Debian installed in it. And everything's good. It was, uh, it was hard to do though, so I'm going to kind of run through the steps of getting it going. So let me turn it on. And then in order to get into the BIOS, we're going we're gonna to hit F2. Until it shows up. And there it is. Okay. Um, the real thing that we had to worry about was going into the advanced and then going right here. You see that? That Sintern boot NC? It, it's trying to boot up something that's programmed into the motherboard. And it kept doing that and it wouldn't boot up anything else. So. I had to disable the Sintern boot and then I had to enable the serial uh, ATA which is the SATA boot and then I had to disable the IDE and and then it's just set on the DOS disk partition. So that one right there, disable the IDE, enable the serial or the SATA and then disable this Sintern boot and it, then it would be it would boot off the uh, USB I was able to load everything and everything's good so um, we'll see what happens here it should load Debian now all right, there goes the reboot. Little screen flash. I can't get it to stay up longer than that. All right, here comes Debian. And there it is. Okay, it's running. 